Viewers and subscribers, I am Wet Squad member Kazalor, and let me introduce you to the Super Mod. Developed by Tactical Collective, this mod is in its first beta, but already includes all of Middle East Escalation, Ukraine War, and the VDV mod. It is set to grow exponentially, as all of Tactical Collective's vast library of mods will be added to it at some point. In fact, the team at Tactical Collective has already reached out to the other mod teams. Their intention? Bringing together squad's best mods into one package that the squad community can download easily. Some mods can't stand on their own, and amazing work that's fun to play doesn't see the light of day, and therefore no one wants to create. When they are included in the network of modes, maps, factions, and layers that already exist in this mod, they can be supported by and or incorporated into the wider gameplay cycle of a server that's running this mod. I think this is great for small teams who can now pursue whatever project they want because they can rely on the player base that the super mod already has to bear witness to their creations. In just a few days, it has garnered so much attention that major vanilla servers have started running their own branch of it. And that is certainly justified. It's fun, and a lot of people have already shown interest in playing it. It is no secret that Squad's community has an appetite for modded gameplay. The vanilla game can get stale, and at times has a serious lack of gameplay diversity, whether that is playstyle, weapons, armor, unique feel to the factions, the base game is somewhat lacking in this regard. That's why mods like Steel Division and Global Escalation become so popular. Now, I want you to imagine a world where some of Squad's best mods were compiled into one convenient place. Diverse factions, a myriad of new armored vehicles, night vision, sniper teams, special forces, new infantry deployables, and a whole host of future content planned. It's all true, and it's all here in the Super Mod. Let's dive in and have a closer look at why you should at least give it a try. If you have never played Middle East Escalation, or for that matter, never played Modded Squad, in this mod, you will play as new factions like Iran's IRGC, Iraqi Ground Forces, and the Free Syrian Army. The Ukrainian Armed Forces are also great. They provide a more diverse equipment base given their access to both Western and Eastern Bloc weapons. To follow along in the same theater, players can use Wagner PMC as a playable faction, a similarly diverse faction with access to a unique mix of high and low quality weaponry. It's a great way to break out of that stale major faction gameplay cycle that we sometimes get stuck to in the vanilla game. Now, personally, what has been a great surprise for me is how well balanced the reworked vanilla factions are. The rebalancing of vehicle decks makes some factions like the US Marines a lot more enjoyable to play. Uh, other reworked vanilla factions include U.S. Army, British Armed Forces, Russian Ground Forces, Australian Defense Forces, and Turkish Land Forces. Nah, enough about that. Let's have a look at what new vehicles you can look forward to, because, after all, we are an armor community. It would take an episode all on its own to go over all the vehicles available in this mod, but here's just a lineup of some of the ones I think you guys might be interested in. Vehicles like a Hell Cannon Techie, or IDF vehicles such as the Aiton Armored Fighting Vehicle and the Merkava Main Battle Tank. French teams will be supported by this speedy yet well-armed VBCI and its fast-firing cannon. In terms of tank guns, they have access to the AMX-10RC MGS and the legendary Leclerc MBT. Taking over the Ukrainian faction, most of you will recognize a lot of these vehicles. There are some, however, mixed in on the Ukrainian faction that are unique to Ukraine. Things like the BTR-4E, with its 30mm cannon, grenade launcher, and ATGMs. Or the Martyr Infantry Fighting Vehicle from Germany. When taking over the Ukraine faction, players will have a plethora of MBTs to choose from. It's like the Leopard 2A4, or the T-55, T-64BM Gulat, and the beautiful, futuristic-looking T-84 Oplot-M. Now that we have had a look at some of the new armored vehicles that you can look forward to in this mod, let's look at an amazing shakeup to the infantry gameplay loop. 
Special Forces. Now, Special Forces are a faction sub-variety of all the available existing factions. So, for example, U.S. Army will have their own Special Forces, and Turkish Land Forces will have their Special Forces, British and Russian, and so on and so forth. Now, they're one of my favorite new additions, and just an overall enjoyable gameplay style to experience. When playing as Special Forces, your team cannot build HABs. Instead, you must rely on the main base and rally points, which are enhanced. Firstly, rally points have a smaller overrunning radius, so they stay alive for longer. Squad leaders have a rally point that is on a timer, so they never need to be rearmed, which is quite convenient. Furthermore, squad leaders can use the famous buddy rally system, which everybody already knows is an incredibly powerful tool for flanking. Though not being able to build HAB seems like a death sentence, in my experience, it isn't, especially when you take into account their other perk, superior training and conditioning. When playing as Spec Ops, players will have significantly increased stamina and elite weapon handling. No noodle arms here, I promise. In gunfights, they absolutely dominate non-Spec Ops faction. To make matters even more crazy, operators flinch significantly less when being shot at, and riflemen can carry 200 ammo. Their kits play into these strengths, including suppressors, night vision, extra anti-tank weapons, and more. This faction makes for amazing gameplay experiences. You can hide in the shadows, picking off waves of inferior enemies at night, or drop behind the lines and ambush the enemy armor with lethal hat double taps. You want a more slow gameplay experience? You could take over the new sniper team leader role and lead a two-man team with some of the most powerful optics and rifles in the game. Like this one. Come on, who doesn't want to use this mist maker? For those of us who appreciate small unit gameplay and cooperative gaming, I think this role is going to be heavily contested. And rightfully so. It's so much fun. Trust me, just get out there and do it for yourself. Now, I won't spoil too much, but if you have never played Modded Squad before, you should really give it a chance. If not for what it already has, but for what it will become. This mod has a huge list of future content to look forward to as well. Big stuff. Attack helicopters, man pads, and AA vehicles are all planned, totally revolutionizing squad by expanding the air element above. New ways of deploying troops, like fast roping and parachute drops, will give players new tactics and gameplay experiences. And one especially exciting twist, an era change, with the Squad Vietnam mod being integrated in the future. There is so much to look forward to with this mod. And as Tactical Collective integrates more content into the Super Mod, we will update you with the latest. Seriously, even if you have never played Modded Squad before, I really urge you, give this one a try. It is a great shakeup to the normal cycle of Vanilla Squad, and it's a whole lot of fun. If you have any suggestions for mods that should be integrated into the Super Mod, let's discuss them in the comments below. Don't forget to check out our Discord link in the description, and we will see you out there. This is Wet Squad member Kaz, signing out.